Hey guys I'm Yurizi. This story is all about what if Naruto can use other people's memories. Sometimes a technique can lead to new discoveries, new paths. A chance discovery lets Naruto learn that which he was never taught, using the memories of others to aid his progress. Before we proceed with the story, please like and subscribe to this channel if you liked the video and don't forget to check the description for the other works of the author if you liked the story. Let's start. Chapter 33, A Genin's Revelations The sliding door closed behind the departing waiter and Naruto took the opportunity to look around. Several of the other genin had been confused by the fact that their jonin senseis had insisted that Naruto sat at the head of the table, even though it was oval, despite the fact that as an independent genin rather than an elite genin, he was technically the lowest ranked of them all. Hinata was sat by Naruto's left with Shino, Akamaru, Kiba, and Kurenai beyond her. To his right were Neji, who was occasionally glancing across as if to check that Naruto wasn't taking liberties with Hinata, or vice versa, Tenten, Lee and Guy. Kakashi was sat beside Guy, occasionally throwing a teasing comment at him while ignoring Guy's half-joking complaints about his unyouthful behavior and his team was lined up beyond him while the final quarter was taken up by Team 10 with their Jonin Sensei Asuma sat smiling next to Kurenai. That was an amazing meal. Kiba sighed, looking at the spot where his plate had been until the waiter had removed it. There's still pudding to go, right? Koji asked and several chuckles sounded. There is but before pudding, there's some business to take care of. Asuma noted. Naruto. Naruto nodded as everyone looked at him, the jonin in support and the genin with curiosity. Before we begin, does anyone know what the word jinchuriki refers to? Naruto asked. The genin exchanged confused glances, except for Hinata who snuggled against his side. Power, of human sacrifice. Shikamaru offered and Naruto nodded. That's the translation of it, yes. There can only be a maximum of nine Jinchuriki at any given time. Asuma. Suna has one, as does Taki. Asuma supplied. Mizu, Kumo, and Iwa all have two each. That's only eight. Shikamaru noted. I'll get to that in a moment. Naruto replied. A Jinchuriki is a shinobi who has had one of the nine biju sealed into them, usually during infancy. This is intended to allow them to use the Biju's chakra as if it was their own, as well as the Biju's special abilities. For instance, the Aichibi can control sand. Judging from your comment, I would postulate a high probability of Gara being a Jinchuriki. Shino said. You'd be right, he is. Naruto confirmed. I don't know if it's his normal personality or if there was something done wrong with the seal, but he's a psychopath who loves killing. Taking him down will be very hard, he's got more chakra than the Hokage and uses a layer of sand over his skin to protect himself from harm. I may need to seriously rethink my tactics. Shino admitted. You have my gratitude for the information you have provided. Yeah. Point is, though, he isn't the Aichibi, he's the container for it. Kinda like if you seal a kunai into a scroll, the scroll doesn't become the kunai. Well said. Tenten noted. Many people don't see it that way. Naruto continued. One particularly nasty myth is that sealing the biju into a child kills the child and the biju wears the body like a glove. That's not true, but if you don't know anything about sealing, you might believe it. That's a nasty rumor. Ino shivered. Just enough yuck in it to appeal to the meaner type of gossipers. I can confirm it's not true. Naruto supplied and Shikamaru gave him a long look. I had suspected something like that. You had suspected something like what? Ino asked. Shikamaru looked at Naruto, who gave him a nod. Naruto is the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi. You're kidding. Ino laughed. He can't be the, wait. He is. I am. Naruto agreed. Like my mother before me was, and her aunt before her. You may have heard of them, Uzumaki Kushina and Uzumaki Mito, better known as Senja Mito. The entire room was silent with both Ino and Sakura staring at him wide-eyed. On the day of my birth, something happened and the Kyubi escaped from its seal. Naruto continued. My father led the fight against it and my parents sacrificed their own lives to seal it away. Wait, wait, wait. Sakura protested. 
Your father led the fight against the Kyuubi? But all the histories I've read about it said that the... Yandaima. Hokage. Oh. My. Kamis. I see you've worked it out. Naruto chuckled as Sakura's eyes widened so much that she could have been mistaken for Lee's sister. My parents were the Yandaime Hokage, Namikaze Minato, and the Red Hot Have Nero, Uzumaki Kushina. Then why are you an Uzumaki rather than... Shikamaru began before he paused and face palmed. Iwa. Iwa. Asuma agreed. Dad decided that he'd let Naruto keep one of his parents' names, but calling him Namikaze was just begging for assassins to flood the village. As for the civilians disliking me, remember the rumor I mentioned earlier. And not many shinobi study fuinjutsu for more than sealing scrolls and explosive tags. Shikamaru commented. So quite a few shinobi disliked me as well. Naruto agreed. As a kid, I sought attention because no one really gave me any. That's why I became such a loud mouth. Even if people were scowling at me and telling me to shut up, they were still paying attention and any attention was better than none at all. No one taught him how to read, or make friends, or anything like that. Hinata said sadly and Naruto gave her a one-armed hug. It was only after I graduated that I found someone willing to actually teach me the basics. Naruto continued, giving Hinata a grateful glance. Hinata Hime is why I got so much better, or at least less dreadful, between graduation and team assignments. After I learned how to read, I almost devoured the civilian and shinobi libraries, the genin portion of the library, anyway. I even found a copy of Uchiha Madara's treatise on traps. Most of the genin briefly winced in painful memory while Ino growled. I also got the few scrolls my parents had left me and that had survived the Kyuubi. Between the scrolls and several teachers that Jiji found for me, I learned how to do the Rasengan in a version of the Hiration. Kiba and Shino both nodded, as did Neji, Tenten and Lee. Before we continue, Asuma interjected, I must point out that Naruto's burden and heritage are S-class secrets. Only he and my father can speak of them without suffering severe penalties. Thanks, Asuma-san. Naruto smiled. Question. Tobio raised his hand. Did Hinata already know? I told her a while back. Naruto admitted while Hinata smiled. She took it far better than I feared. She glomped him. Kurenai giggled. Hayashi told me. He was, almost smiling. Anyway. Naruto said quellingly, pausing as he realized just who it was he had tried to quell. The Kyuubi is the great secret that your parents weren't allowed to tell you as well as the reason that many of the adults warned their children away from me. Does explain why you smell of fox. Kiba mused, then he grinned. So, Hinata loves snuggling her foxy boy, huh? Naruto opened his mouth, then paused as he glanced down to see Hinata's vacant, happy gaze. Damn it, Kiba. He grumbled. Now I'll have to come up with a new henge. What? Sakura asked, completely lost by the sudden turn of conversation. Can we have pudding now? Koji asked. Father, I will need assistance in formulating new tactics. Aburama Shivi looked at his son, one eyebrow raised just enough to show above his sunglasses. Elucidate. I have been informed that my primary adversary in the final stage is the Jinchuriki of the Aichibi who is gifted with the ability to manipulate sand to such a degree that he utilizes it as a protective exoskeleton of his own. This is in addition to his ability to wield large quantities of it in both lethal offense and powerful defense. Then the obvious solution is to prevent him from using his sand. Shivi mused. A thought occurs to me, but we shall need to examine the stadium to determine its validity. You may also be required to learn water walking, if you have not done so already. That was fast. Sasuke gasped, staring at the low, round house in front of him. Naruto helped and we had a lot of building material in wave that he helped send over. Tajuna shrugged. Once the foundations were ninjaed into place, building the actual house was easy. Can I show you around? Sasuke followed Tajuna through the front door and into a large room that seemed to take up half the total floor space. This is the general area for guests and so on. Tajuna explained. Those stairs lead to the balcony. 
That door is a small bathroom with a toilet and sink while over there is a general kitchen area for making snacks and so on. There's a corridor that goes round from that door to that one, but we're going this way. Sasuke followed Tajuna down a corridor to the junction. Kitchen slash dining room on that side, general room on that one. Tajuna pointed. Staircase at the back leads up and down, there's a basement below for storage and so on, but we're going up. Sasuke glanced down into the basement before following Tajuna up the stairs and through another, shorter, corridor. Four bedrooms of equal size, one bathroom with shower and a windowed area for whatever you need it for. Tajuna said, then he led Sasuke out through a central door. And the roof balcony. The house seems to be based on the Uchiha fan. Sasuke noted and Tajuna nodded. That's right. I, like it. Onaki stared at the man standing in front of him. Akechuchi's team, failed. I'm afraid so, Onaki-sama. Kage replied. He sent me ahead to tell you that he's confirmed that Naruto is indeed the son of Uzumaki Kushina and Namikaze Minato, as well as having knowledge of both of his father's techniques. Fuck. Onaki swore. This is not good. Onaki glowered at the far wall, then looked at Kage curiously. Is there something else? On my way back, I made contact with an injured shinobi. Kage said, pulling out a prisoner scroll. When he realized how fast I could move, he asked if I could use one of his scrolls to carry him. As he spoke, Kage unrolled the scroll and applied some chakra to it, causing a figure to appear in a cloud of chakra smoke and Onaki's eyes widened in shock. Kikuchi. Your son-in-law, on his way back from his mission. Kage confirmed. Apparently it was a success. Lord. Chu Chikage. Kikuchi managed to whisper and Onaki looked down at him. Stay quiet. He commanded. Report later, for now, I think you need to recover. And don't fake your death again without informing me first, damn it. Sorry, Pops. Kikuchi managed, then his eyes closed. Medic. What a day. Naruto sighed as he closed his door. Then he paused as a flash of golden light from outside reflected off the walls. Turning, he reopened the door just in time to see the three men who had taught him the high ration vanish, leaving Hinata standing alone. Hinata. Hello, Naruto-kun. Hinata smiled as she walked up to him and gave him a quick hug. I told my dad about what you did today and he agreed with my suggestion. Naruto shook his head in confusion. I'm sorry, what suggestion? You just told eleven people your deepest secret. Hinata said, gently pushing Naruto backwards so that she could enter his house. After a day like that, you need some serious snuggle time, right? For a long moment, Naruto simply stared at her, then he grinned and caught her up in a huge hug, causing the bag that she had been carrying to drop onto the ground. You were right. Kiba said, lowering his binoculars. Just as you predicted. Beside him, Shino nodded, lowering his own binoculars with an air of satisfaction. I believe that we should leave them be. He said and Kiba nodded. Yep. I've got to get some sleep, mom's going to teach me a new move tomorrow. I shall look forwards to seeing it in the finals. Shina said as the duo slithered backwards over the ridge of the valley, making certain that they were completely concealed before standing up. See you at the next team meeting. Kiba said and Shino nodded. Neither of them saw the amused expression of their sensei, watching them from behind a genjutsu while sitting on a tree branch above their heads. As they departed, her gaze moved to the circular window where Hinata was laying out both her pajamas and Naruto's. Sleep well. Kurenai whispered with a soft smile. I am so proud of you, Hinata. So proud. Chapter 34, Discussions and Decisions Sensei Sakura began and Kakashi gave her a quizzical look as he pocketed his book. About yesterday. It's safe to talk about it. Kakashi said, motioning for the other two genin to join him at the three stumps. The law says that one who knows about Naruto's burden may not speak of it to anyone who doesn't know. What did you want to know? I thought he covered it pretty well yesterday. Sakura looked slightly embarrassed, but plunged ahead. After we had the bell test. I overheard someone say that it was Naruto you asked for, was it because of his father? It was. Kakashi confirmed. 
I thought that by being around him, I could try to make up for not being there when he was younger, but, he really looks like Sensei, but he thinks almost like Kushina did. So you'd have been happy to train him instead? Tobio asked as he rubbed at the bandages on his neck and Kakashi hummed and thought. I'm not sure I'd have taught him well. He finally admitted. I only really looked at what I had become because he chose to walk away. If I hadn't done that. I'm not sure how much of a teacher I'd have been. All of the Jinshuriki of the Kyubi have been from the Uzumaki clan. Sasuke stated and Kakashi nodded. The Uzumaki clan were renowned for their longevity, endurance, few injutsu skills, and their powerful chakra reserves. Only an Uzumaki could survive having the Kyuba sealed into them. Sasuke nodded slowly. I see. Naruto was the only choice. And he suffered because of it. Kakashi sighed. Shunned, virtually abandoned, despised by those who couldn't tell the difference between the prison and the prisoner. I still don't know how he didn't go psychotic. Maybe a full round of tests might tell us, but I don't think Naruto'd sit still that long. Tobio and Sasuke snorted at the thought of Naruto trying to sit through the first stage of the Chunin exam. So. Kakashi chirped, clapping his hands. Moving on, training for the finals. Sakura, Ankos expressed an interest in taking time off her TNI duties in order to devote all of her time to your training. Since you still need help with taijutsu and battle tactics, I told her that I'd pass her offer on. If you choose to try elsewhere, I'll do my best to find you another tutor. Since Sasuke has finally managed to develop his third Tomo in his Sherinan and I have a Sherinan, I need to help him finish adjusting, but I'll make sure to check in with you at least twice a week. Sakura nodded. Thanks, Sensei. Tell Anko Sensei I accept. Tobio, you may want to do more than simply train. So I've contacted a Takubitsu Jonin called Ebisu who's agreed to take you, Rock Lee and Hyuga Hinata as a temporary team from tomorrow until after the finals. It'll only be for one day and three since he has quite a few other commitments he needs to attend to, but he'll also oversee your training on those days as well. For the other two days, Asuma has offered to take you under his wing alongside Team 10. Thanks, Sensei. Tobio smiled. Anything for my students. Kakashi said with his standard eye smile. Good morning. Kurenai smiled to her trio of students. Hinata, I hope you slept well. To Kurenye's amusement, Hinata blushed bright red while both Shino and Kiba tried to conceal their own smiles. Shino, Kiba, congratulations on your victories. Kurenai continued. However, this does make the month ahead a bit more complex. All three genin were looking at her with Hinata no longer blushing. Kiba, Shino, since you will both need to train further in your family's styles, I would suggest that we only train as a team once every three days. For each of the other two days, I will help one of you two to improve in whichever field you think you need most. Anno, and me? Hinata asked quietly. Since Tobio and Rock Lee didn't make it to the finals, I would like you to join them as part of a temporary team under special Jonin Ebisu. Kurenai said with a gentle smile. It will help you learn how to work with others, although it will only be for one day in three. So I have one day in three to do whatever I want. Hinata asked and Kurenai nodded. Yes, you can spend it with Naruto. She half teased, causing Hinata to blush again. Hey, Hinata. Kiba said, causing the girl to turn to look at him. During one of your days off, can I spar with you? I need to get better at fighting a Jiyukin user if I'm gonna kick your cousin's ass. Although I believe that it shall be myself in that position, your idea has much to recommend it. Shino said, earning a growl from Kiba. I also would appreciate the occasional spar. We can arrange it all once we get the schedule settled. Kurenai interjected. Now. Let's talk about yesterday and the revelation. I'm cool with it. Kiba shrugged. Naruto's still Naruto. Explains his scent, but other than that, nothing's changed. That position is one that I find myself aligned with. Shino said in agreement, causing Hinata to smile in gratitude at her teammates. Sensei. Ino smiled even as she continued to dip Senbon in a small bottle, placing the treated Senbon in a special holder. Sensei. Koji nodded, quickly finishing off his bag of crisps. 
Shikamaru merely waved from the slight rise where he was cloud watching. So, Asuma said. You've had all night to consider what you've learned yesterday. I said it before and I'll say it again, Naruto is still Naruto. We know. Shikamaru yawned. We were discussing it before you came, as well as what it means for Naruto. He'll be a target. Ino stated, glancing up from her work. His parents, the Kyubi, that reminds me. Is he rich? Did he inherit the entire fortune of Uzushiagakur? No, because there wasn't one. Asuma stated as he pulled out his packet of cigarettes and flicked it using a precise burst of chakra to shift one cigarette enough that it extended out of the box, easy to grab. Kushina came here before Uzu fell. The attackers took everything that they could, but most of Uzu's treasures were destroyed. Shikamaru frowned. Scrolls. Information. Techniques. Correct. Asuma confirmed. The Uzumaki clan, the leaders that Uzu officially didn't have, were masters of few injutsu. The things that they could do with it was incredible. Some claim that the Uzumaki clan's seven greatest few injutsu masters were the true creators of the seven swords of the mist. And it was their skill that caused the other villages to unite and destroy them. Shikamaru concluded. If their message had got through, then the hidden villages would now consist of Suna, Kanaha, and Uzu. Asuma said, his gaze fixed on something that no one else could see. Iwa, Kumo, and Mizu united to attack Uzushiagakur in the hope of weakening Kanaha ready for them to invade and destroy. However, Uzu did not go down easily. Jiraiya managed to piece together what happened. Uzu was betrayed. The other villages sent diplomats who were actually saboteurs. They disabled the outer defenses and killed many of the senior shinobi just as the main forces attacked. The villages expected a slaughter and they got one, but not how they expected. The actual records are sealed, but for each Uzu shinobi who fell, seven attackers died. Even the Uzu genin were taking on Jonin and holding their own. When they ran out of swords and kunai, they used stones and sticks. When they ran out of those, they used their teeth and bare hands. They never ran out of courage but in the end, they ran out of time. Uzu was destroyed. What the fighting didn't demolish, the trap jutsus did. The skyscrapers tumbled, the foundations cracked and the island became uninhabitable. And Kanaha's forces arrived three days too late, just in time to see the enemy ships sail away, carrying only a tithe of the army that had assaulted the swirling tide. The genin all stared at him. Did you ever wonder why Kanaha won the last shinobi war when Suna effectively sat it out and the others allied against us? Asuma asked. Sure, quite a bit of it was the Yondai Me, but even he wouldn't have been able to turn the tide had Uzu not inflicted so many casualties on the armies that attacked it. And Naruto is an Uzumaki. Shikamaru breathed. No wonder he can be so troublesome. Speaking of troublesome, Asuma interjected, we're getting a temporary member from Team 7. Sasuke. Ino squealed and Asuma shook his head. Nope. Tobio. Makes sense. Shikamaru muttered just loud enough for the others to hear him. Like us, he didn't make it through. But Sakura and Sasuke did. Asuma confirmed. He's not going to be here every day since he's also on another part-time team, but he will be doing some of the missions with us. Good morning, my youthful students. My guy declaimed as he somersaulted into the training ground. Good morning, Guy sensei Lee shouted back, almost drowning out the greetings of the other two. Guy motioned for them to approach as he sat down. Before we get started for the day, may I say once again how proud I am of all of you. Guy stated with none of his usual bombastic personality in evidence. Neji, you made it through without having to reveal the depth of your skills, a fact which will help you during the finals as your opponents will not know what to expect. Tenten, your opponent will be able to match any jutsu you use and will have a perception advantage, but I believe that you can defeat him and I will gladly give both of you whatever help I can. Lee, it is unfortunate that you went up against a Kunoichi who was strong in the art of genjutsu. I have spoken to Takubitsu Jonin Ebisu about that and he has promised to cover genjutsu and how to fight them in more depth than I did. I failed you, Lee and for that I apologize. You did not fail me, Gai-sensei. Lee protested. Without your help and example, I would never have become a ninja, 
let alone one who has completed as many missions as I have. Before this goes mushy, Tenton interjected, what are we doing about training? I mean, Neji has his entire clan to help him. Neji nodded in agreement. But I don't have a shinobi clan to help me learn new things. I will be your primary tutor, aiding you in improving your skills. Guy said. I made a study of how to fight a user of the Sherinan when I was younger and since Uchiha Sasuke will be your first match, I will gladly teach you all that I discovered regarding it. Why would you do that? Neji wondered. Was it Itachi? It was my eternal rival. Guy corrected. When Kakashi lost his teammate but gained the Sherinan, I began studying for the matches I would have against him. That, actually makes sense. Tenten mused. Ibiki frowned at the sound of cackling echoing through the base. Filing away the report on the failed capture of the now fugitive Genin Iryan and Yakushi Kabuto, he rose from behind his desk and stalked out of his office, his trench coat flaring dramatically behind him. It had taken a very expensive tailor to achieve that effect, but it was generally worth it. Striding down the subterranean corridor, he came to a halt by another door and rapped once on it, causing the cackling to halt as if a switch had been thrown. A few seconds later, the door was flung open. Wah, oh. Hi, Ibiki. Need me for another job? Actually, no. Ibiki rumbled. However, you have piqued my curiosity. Anko went blank for a moment. What? You were cackling. Ibiki explained. I actually cannot remember the last time that I heard you cackling. What happened? Ah, oh, it's awesome. Anko snickered. Not only have I seen Kakashi without his mask, I'm about to go and get my sword of apprentice full time to train up for the finals. Ibiki blinked, unable to decide which of the two facts were more important. Kakashi showed you his face. He finally asked and Anko bounced up and down with excitement. Yes. Ebisu owes me a bottle of sake. He's not bucktoothed. Chapter 35, A Genin's Training This seems, almost boring. Hinata admitted as she and Naruto slowly walked along the top of the wall surrounding Kanaha. Boring is good. Naruto countered, his eyes scanning the treetops as he used the quote that Kasuke had used on him months before. It's when things get exciting that you know it's gone bad. I never really thought that walking the wall would be like this. Hinata commented. I suppose that it's a fallback mission for those genin who aren't on a team or have non-shinobi jobs. Naruto nodded. So, who is Kurenai training today? Shino today, Kiba tomorrow. Hinata replied. We're only doing one full team training day a week and one team mission, although both Kiba and Shino have asked me to spar with each once a week so that they can work out ways to beat the Jiyukin. They both seem quite confident. Naruto laughed, earning a confused look. The way the matches are set up, they'll have to face each other first and then the winner is the one who'll have a chance to face Neji in the final match. Hinata nodded in agreement. So, once we've walked the wall, what then? Jiraiya was saying something about teaching me to summon. Naruto stated while Hinata activated her Byakugan to scan the nearby woods. I'm afraid that the summon clan in question is known to only take one person per generation. Jiraiya, Dad, and now, hopefully, me. Can I attend? Hinata asked hopefully. I don't really have anything planned for the rest of the day. Sure. Naruto shrugged, then he frowned. Summoning takes a lot of chakra. Even if they accept you as a potential summoner, you might not be able to actually summon them for ages. I know. Hinata said with a shrug of her own. But someday I will go up against a shinobi who can use summons, so learning all I can about them beforehand is just common sense, what's that? Naruto paused as he looked out, his gaze coming to rest on the bird that had erupted from the tree canopy. Not certain. He said, palming a kunai, then reversing his grip on it so that he could use it to tap out a generic warning notification. Is it within your visual range yet? Not yet, wait. One shinobi, moving towards us at high speed, pursued by three more. Naruto summoned a horde of Kage Bunshin which promptly flooded down the wall and into the woods. He's been hit. Hinata gasped as Naruto tossed the kunai to a clone who took over relaying the message even as he summoned a second wave of clones. 
They're closing in on him and... Yes. Your clones are there. A flash of light lanced up through the trees even as Masked Umbu started appearing beside the two genin. They're retreating now that they've lost their target. Hinata reported. Moving fast and, and they've got out of my range. Sorry. Don't be. One of the Umbu said as the others launched themselves into the woods. Good work with the alert. What happened to the runner? I sent him straight to the special cell in TNI with a clone to explain things to them. Naruto said, looking slightly embarrassed. I, didn't recognize him, so. Will we ever find out what this was all about? Hinata asked and Naruto shook his head. Highly unlikely. You're an elite genin with a jonin sensei, so you haven't really discovered just how much of what normal shinobi get caught up in is classified as need to know. If you don't need to know. Naruto trailed off with a shrug and Hinata made a face, then she frowned in thought. Do you know what happened to that ninja who bowed out, what was his name? Kabuto. Officially, no. Naruto sighed. Unofficially, judging from the rumors I've overheard, he's vanished. Not Umbu vanished, but vanished vanished. Hinata blinked. He's just, vanished. His sensei doesn't know where he went. Naruto confirmed. I don't know any more than that at the moment. Need to know, right? Hinata sighed and Naruto nodded. Need to know. Ah, the lovebirds have arrived. Jiraiya smirked as Naruto and Hinata appeared in a flash of light. Naruto turned to face his sensei even as his clone moved into the house to begin making lunch. Jiraiya-sama. Hinata said politely as Jiraiya put his notebook away. Hyuga-sama. Jiraiya returned. Naruto sent a clone ahead to inform me that you would be here as an observer. Hey, brat. I heard you let in the other rookies on the secret of your burden. Sure that was wise. Given what's already been revealed about me, it was only a matter of time. Naruto sighed. Better to control it, rather than have them get part of the truth in a ton of lies. True. Jiraiya agreed. At least you had a good reason. I assume you had backup just in case things went wrong. Hinata and the four Jonin senseis. Naruto supplied and Jiraiya smiled at him approvingly. Excellent. In most circumstances, you can never have too much backup. Most circumstances. Hinata queried. Covered infiltration. Jiraiya replied. The more backup you have, the more likely it is that someone will slip up and blow the whole thing or your backup will be discovered and things will get furaking difficult to escape from. Nice correction. Naruto smirked and Jiraiya gave him an amused glare. Be nice, brat, or I might decide to wait until you're a chin in for this. You wouldn't do that to my fiancé, would you, Jiraiya-sama? Naruto took a moment to admire how Hinata had managed to pull off the perfect kawaii no jutsu, widening her eyes, summoning just a hint of tears in the corners, while her posture had changed from competent kunoichi to totally cute and innocent mo. Arg. Damn it. Jiraiya shouted, raising his hands to cover his eyes. Stop her. She's too damned cute. I'll teach you anything, just stop her before she destroys my defenses. Thank you, Jiraiya-sama. Hinata said, ending the technique. Jiraiya peeped between his fingers, sighed in relief and then took his previous stance as if nothing had happened. So, summoning. Jiraiya said. All summon tribes have different strengths and weaknesses. Some are stealthy, some are used mainly for transport, some are used in combat, but they all have the same thing in common, they all need the same summoning technique. But simply doing a summon is a bad move as if you don't have a signed contract, you'll be reverse summoned to the summons tribe that best matches your personality, and most of them don't actually like humans. Some of them live in places that would kill a person instantly, so unless you've signed a summons scroll, don't even think of trying it. Both Jenin nodded at the sheer sincerity in Jiraiya's warning. And speaking of scrolls, Jiraiya added, unslinging the giant scroll he was carrying across his back. Here we go, the toad summoning contract. Naruto looked at the long scroll, then his eyes moved to the last two names exposed on it. Who's Arashi? What? Jiraiya stared at Naruto. Arashi. It's the name just there, Arashi. Jiraiya looked at it, 
Then he shook his head. No, that says Minato. It looks like Arashi. Hinata mused as she followed Naruto's gaze. Jiraiya humphed as he pointed at the first empty space. Okay, Naruto, before we go any further, you need to sign there, in blood. Blood is very important for things like this, so, good. Naruto plunged the kunai into the ground to clean it even as he used his right hand to sign his name. Good calligraphy. Hinata said approvingly as she used the mystical palm technique on Naruto's left hand, closing and healing the cut across the ball of his thumb. Excellent. Jiraiya smiled. Now, these are the seals. Boar, dog, bird, monkey, ram, blood, and hand on ground. Naruto slowly ran through the seals. How much chakra do I need? And how does it need to be released? As much as you can. Jiraiya replied. Half and half. Half through the seals, the rest when you've drawn blood and put your hand on the ground. I'd suggest biting your thumb for the blood. Naruto nodded, then frowned. As much chakra as possible, right? Jiraiya nodded, then blinked in confusion as Hinata quickly stepped back. Kaimon. Kyumon. Siaman. Jiraiya's eyes widened in shock as a chakra aura roared into life around Naruto and his skin turned red, then Naruto blurred through the five hand seals, bit the tip of his thumb and slammed his hand down. Kuchi Yase no Jutsu. A cloud of smoke briefly blotted Naruto from sight, then a new voice spoke. Jiraiya? We were just about to eat. Oh, hush, I'm sure that he has a good reason for summoning us. Ma? Pa? Jiraiya gaped as the cloud dissipated to reveal a pair of ancient toads looking up at him. Hmm. The male toad mused. Come to think of it, that didn't quite feel like Jiraiya summoning us. We've got a new summoner. The female toad asked. Well, it's about time. We were starting to think you'd never get over the death of your apprentice. Hinata looked up from where she was supporting Naruto, who had half collapsed against her but was watching the two toads with fascination even as his skin slowly lost its reddish hue. You knew the Yondai meh? We were about to teach him the art of toad senjutsu, but he went up against the Kyubi and died. Pa Toad said, turning to look at the two genin. Oh look, young love. Ma Toad gushed as she peered round Pa Toad and caught sight of the duo. I remember when we used to cuddle like that, we don't cuddle like that much these days, to Chan. I miss the cuddles. The male toad sighed, then turned to face Jiraiya. Hey, Jiraiya. Stop trying to catch flies and introduce us. Jiraiya shook his head in an attempt to refocus. Introductions. Right. Naruto, Hinata, let me introduce the two great sage toads, Fyokazaku of Mount Miyabaku and his wife Shima. Ma, Pa, may I introduce the new toad summoner Uzumaki Naruto, son of the Yondaime Hokage Nami Kaze Minato and Uzumaki Kushina, as well as his fiancée, Hyuga Hinata. It is a great honor to meet you. Hinata bowed, managing to support Naruto at the same time. I haven't heard of any of the others getting summoned, first time. Fyokazaku asked and Naruto nodded. I used three gates to make sure I had enough chakra. Fyokazaku moved closer to Naruto and squinted at him before nodding. Interesting. You have potential. Once you get old enough, you'll do well as a sage. First of all, we need to get him confirmed as a summoner. Jiraiya interjected and Fyokazaka waved him off. Go perv at some bathing women or something and leave this to me. While he's doing that, Shima said as she hopped to where Hinata was watching Fyokazaka leading Naruto to one side, will you tell me about yourself? It's not often we get a summoner who has family and family is very important. I. I'm not quite family yet. Hinata managed and Shima waved her hand dismissively. Nonsense, you're his fiancé and from how I saw you hugging him, you two are very much in love. I can smell your love for him, you know. We toads are good at things like that. Hinata looked at the elderly toad, then across to where Fyokazaka was talking to Naruto in a low but intense voice. Don't worry. He's safe with Tachan. Anno. I'm Hyuga Hinata, former heir to the Hyuga clan. Hinata began. So, how did it go? Hiruzen asked without bothering to look up from his paperwork and Jiraiya chuckled from where he was sprawled on the windowsill. Kid not only managed it first time, 
he did something that caught me by surprise. He summoned Gamabunta. That was the second time. Jiraiya smirked. The first time, he summoned Ma NPA. For a long moment, the apparently innocuous comment didn't register, then the brush fell from Hiruzen's hand. What? Brad used three gates to make sure he had enough chakra. Jiraiya laughed. Overshot considerably and summoned Ma and Pa. Pa took it on himself to teach Naruto how to summon more efficiently, faster seals, slight adjustments to chakra flow, things like that, while Ma and Hinata were sat to one side swapping gossip about their respective clans. You almost had to have been there. It sounds like it. Hiruzen agreed, leaning back in his chair and pulling his pipe out. So, are you going to teach him more tomorrow? We did a test. Jiraiya shrugged. Did you know that if you put a high ration tag in the summons realm, you can use it to get there by yourself? We had Patoed take back a kunai, then Naruto sent a clone through to test. He even got the memories back. Wait. Hiruzen said, his hands frozen in the middle of refilling his pipe. You mean? Yep. Jiraiya replied. He's going to head over there tomorrow to meet all of the toads and get their permission to summon them. Amazing. Hiruzen breathed. Amazing. Ain't it just? Jiraiya agreed, then he frowned. I'll need to tell him what sort of things to take, though, maybe tag along. Chapter 36, A Genin Amongst the Toads A flash of golden light briefly illuminated the room and when it died down, three blondes were standing in a circle around a larger, white-haired figure. For a long moment, no one moved, then two of the blondes vanished in clouds of smoke. Well, pervy sage, you now know beyond all doubt that it works. I can transport others between realms, not just myself. Pervy sage. A large voice chuckled and Jiraiya frowned at his younger companion. Damn it, brat. Now Gamabunta is going to be calling me that every time I summon him. What? Naruto shrugged. I've been calling you it almost since we first met. He's got you pegged, pervy sage. Gamabunta chuckled and Jiraiya sighed. So, what are you going to teach him? Kid, hop on. Gamabunta commanded and Naruto jumped onto the proffered webbed hand without any hesitation. Jiraiya, Pa wanted to talk to you about trying to deal with your weakness regarding sage mode. In the meantime, I'm taking the brat to meet the great toad sage. Holy! Jiraiya yelped. You're taking him to meet Gamamaru? Kid, be respectful. Jiraiya. Where have you been? Fyokakasu shouted as he seemed to appear from nowhere, holding a large stick. We have training to do. Not the stick. Jiraiya winced. Please, there must be another way. There isn't and you know it. Fyokakasu said, jumping onto Jiraiya's shoulder. Now, to the sacred oil fountain. Naruto watched from Gamabunta's hand as Jiraiya reluctantly set off. Do I want to know what all that is about? Give it five years or so and it'll be your turn. Gamabunta shrugged, raising Naruto up to the top of his head. Now hold on tight and prepare for a ride. Why don't I like the sound of that? Naruto whispered to himself as he grabbed the collar of Gamabunta's kimono as tightly as he could, then used the tree walking exercise he had so painstakingly learned under Hinata's guidance to anchor himself at every point of contact. And here we go. Gamabunta declared as he leaped high into the air. Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
The toad said, waving for Naruto to approach. Let me see you, these old eyes of mine don't see all that well, but they still let me see enough. Naruto walked forwards, glancing round. Several of the scrolls, each at least three times longer than he was tall, lay on the ground with a couple of them partially unrolled in position so that the toad in the middle of the room could read them. The toad himself was sat in what appeared to be a raised, stone pool with a small banner hanging from the front, one with the kanji for sage on it. So, I am the great toad sage Gamamaru and you would be, who are you again? My name is Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto supplied, uncertain as to whether Gamamaru was indeed absent-minded or was testing him. I am the son of the Yondaime Hokage Nami Kaze Minato, also known as the Yellow Flash, and his wife Uzumaki Kushina, also known as the Red Hot Habanero. I am the third Jinshuriki of the Kyubi and the student of Jiraiya of the Sunin. Ah, <laughs> I remember now. Gamamaru exclaimed. The mischievous blue-eyed boy. Naruto blinked in confusion. I. I've calmed down quite a bit. I only really prank people as part of training now. A snore was his answer and Naruto stared in shock at Gamamaru. Wake up! Shima shouted from just behind Naruto and Gamamaru jolted, causing a small wave of water to spill over the lip of his pond. You wanted to talk to this boy, great sage. What boy? Oh, that boy. Step closer so I can see you. Naruto gave Shima a confused look and she shrugged back before waving him forwards. Hmm. Hmm, yes. Yes, I see. You shall meet a creature with octopus tentacles and fight one with powerful eyes. Yes, yes. Naruto stared at Gamamaru and Shima sighed. He's fallen asleep again, come on. It's time to introduce you to the other toads. Naruto followed Shima out of the room, but paused in the doorway, looking back at the slumbering sage. Will he be all right? Hmm. Shima paused, looking back at the elder toad. Oh, he'll be fine. He often naps like that, not surprising really. You know that he fought alongside the sage of the six paths and his brother when he was younger. The sage was real. Naruto asked in near shock. I've heard several of the Hyuga claim that they were descended from him. I never met at Satsuki Hagoromo or at Susuki Hamura, but I've heard the tales, Shima mused, the Hyuga you say? If I remember the stories Gamamaru told us correctly, I think it was Hamura who had the Byakugan while Hagoromo had the Rinnegan, or was it the other way around? I'll have to check the archives to see what happened to them, though. I think I remember the moon being involved somehow. Naruto followed the diminutive female as she muttered about her memory not being what it once was. Naruto. Naruto gave Gamakaki, who was orange. What an awesome color, an apologetic shrug as he turned towards the speaker. May I help you, Fyokazaku-san? You may as well just call me Pa, like Jiraiya does and your father did. The elderly toad smiled. I've left Jiraiya practicing under Mazai and now it's time for your training. Sorry. Kichi. Naruto apologized and the young toad smiled at him. Hey, training from great gramps is more important than shooting the breeze. Gamakaki shrugged. I'll see you around and remember, have some sweets ready when you summon me. Sure thing. Naruto laughed as he rose to his feet, then turned to face the elderly sage. What training are we doing? Fyokazaku prodded Naruto's stomach. We're going to contact the Kyubi and start you learning how to use its chakra. Learning how to use chakra that isn't yours but flows through your coils will be a good training exercise for when you finally learn sage mode. It'll also help you to stay alive, since it'll give you another weapon to use against those who want to hurt you. Naruto looked down at his stomach as if he could see the complex seal that his father had placed on him, despite the t-shirt and haori that he was wearing. Can't I, just ignore it. Fyokazaku gave him a look and Naruto sighed. Okay. Fine. I'll be in there with you. Fyokazaku offered and Naruto gave him a look of gratitude. Now come on, I've had a special area created just for this sort of thing. What is this place? Naruto asked as he looked round the clearing and the trees that surrounded it, trees grown and shaped so that their branches entwined and twisted in patterns somehow similar to some of the few injutsu that he had seen. This is where we shall enter your mindscape. Fyokakasu stated as he clambered onto one of the two flat-topped stones positioned almost in the center of the clearing. 
Now sit down and get ready. Naruto carefully sat on the second stone, crossing his legs and placing the backs of his hands on his knees. I was almost afraid that you didn't know how to meditate. Fyokazaku said, his voice filled with approval. Gai-sensei taught me. Naruto replied. He explained that there are several different types of meditation and they can be used to help improve control over your body and your chakra. I prefer to use the katas of the gentle breeze style to meditate, but Gai-sensei insisted I be familiar with all the better known ways of meditating. Gai. 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 Fyokazaku mused. Would that be might guy? You know him? Naruto asked and Fyokazaku shook his head. Know him, no. Know of him, yes. He's the current holder of the tortoise contract, although it should actually be called the tortoise and turtle contract, I've heard Ningame moaning that guy doesn't summon him nearly enough. I'll pass that message on to guy. Naruto said, marveling at the surreal turn the conversation had taken. Anyway. Fyokazaku stated. That's not why we're here. The Kyubi. You ready to meditate? I am. Then start meditating and I'll join you in your mindscape. Naruto half closed his eyes and concentrated on controlling his breathing, inhaling through his nose and breathing out through his mouth. As he did so, the trees around them started to glow, shocking him out of his near trance. What's with the trees? They're glowing, it's fading. They're meant to do that. Fyokazaku explained. It's how I'll be able to enter your mindscape. Now, try again. Naruto fully closed his eyes in order to avoid being distracted by the oddly luminescent trees. Once again, he began his breathing exercises, then he moved on to controlling his heart rate and calming his thoughts. Excellent. We're here. Naruto opened his eyes, then looked around in confusion. This is my mindscape. Yes and no. Fyokazaku shrugged. It's the prison that holds the Kyubi, but formed from your experiences. It's a sewer. Naruto protested. My mind is a sewer. If Ino or Kiba find out about this, I'll never live it down. Fyokazaku snorted with laughter, then sniffed several times. I smell the fox. This way. Naruto followed Fyokazaku as they splashed through the shallow water flowing from the direction that they were headed. Ahead of them, bars glinted in the darkness, bars that stretched from the ground to the ceiling. As they drew closer, it became apparent that the bars were actually a pair of gates with the hinges deeply embedded in the side of the tunnel while the gates were held closed by a slightly tattered piece of paper with the kanji for seal inscribed on it. This, this is the seal that Dad used to trap the Kyubi. Naruto asked rhetorically. And where is the Kyubi? So, my jailer finally deigns to meet me. A deep voice rumbled and a pair of glowing red eyes opened slowly, their malevolent gaze fixed on Naruto. Odd. Fyokazaku muttered as he moved closer to the bars. I sense an, echo, a, trace, of a dojutsu, a genjutsu, control. In the past, but the echoes still remain. What are you babbling about, frog? The deep voice growled and Naruto swallowed as he saw giant fangs glinting in the shadows. I suppose that it's a mystery for another time. Fyokazaku allowed. Gamamaru said that you were less than you were, but would be whole once again in time. The great toad sage said that. Naruto blinked as the threatening voice suddenly changed to one that was less vengeful and more hopeful. Your father's friend did indeed. Fyokazaku said and Naruto felt his mouth go dry as the Kyubi appeared from the darkness, looming above them both. Tell me more. Well, Fyokazaku said as they opened their eyes and found themselves back in the glade. While that could have gone better, it could very easily have gone worse. Thanks for adjusting the seal like that. Naruto remarked as he stretched. Being stuck in the dark like that isn't my idea of fun, I have no clue how the Kyuba didn't go mad in there. Probably slept a lot. Fyokazaku replied as he levered himself back onto his feet. Just remember, you control the link. For now. The Kyubia's voice seemed to echo. I'll have to go through all those damned exercises again to get used to the new flow. Naruto griped as he tried to form Murasengan, only for it to destabilize and evaporate. Damn it, that'll take weeks at the very least. Then I'd advise you to get started. Fyokazaku said. For now, you can use the special portal to return to Kanaha. 
I'll get Jiraiya and have him meet you there. Chapter 37, A Genin's Retraining Naruto, what's wrong? Naruto half turned to look at the one who had asked the question. Hey, Hinata. It's, well, long story short, during my day with the Toads, they taught me how to speak to my tenant. Bad news, my chakra got a boost from it and as a result, my control's almost back to when we first met. Hinata activated her Byakugan and winced slightly. There's more red chakra in your system than before. Yeah. Naruto sighed as he summoned several dozen clones who promptly started trying to water walk and tree walk. I'm going to be spending the next week or two just doing chakra control exercises. This is going to be a pain, especially since I don't want to risk cloning you until I get my control back up. Risk. Hinata asked, then her expression showed sudden understanding. Your tenant's chakra. You don't know how it'll react with your control problems. A loud crack interrupted her and she stared at the toppling tree, then her gaze switched to the embarrassed looking clone sitting at the base of the newly formed stump. You need help. She concluded. I'll ask dad if I can teach you a couple of the clan's exercises. The more exercises you know, the faster you can get your control back. Jiraiya. Hiruzen said as his student lounged on the windowsill. Sensei. Jiraiya replied, rubbing his shoulder and earning a quizzical eyebrow. Training with Pa and Ma Toad to improve my Senjutsu. On the plus side, I only need one of them in order to go Sage in battle and my nose doesn't change as much. Heck, I can use Sage mode independently but only for about 3 minutes at the moment. Negative side, I still ache all over, damned stick. Shame the monkeys don't have Sages, not since Sun Wu vanished. Here is amused. How soon before you're back to full ability? Well before the finals, if that's what you're asking. Jiraiya replied. I won't really be able to teach Naruto for a while, kid needs to get his chakra control back after learning how to talk to the fox. What? Ah, yeah. I forgot to mention. Jiraiya said with an embarrassed shrug. Patoed took him to, somewhere and when they came back, he could talk to his tenant and was getting chakra from it. And you didn't mention this before, because... Hiruzen grumped, slowly lowering himself back down into his seat. Jiraiya shrugged again. Well, it's not like he's using the pure chakra of the fox, it's still mixing into his own system via the seal, hence his need to regain his chakra control. Hiruzen gave his student a long glare, then sighed. It's always something new with him, isn't it? Shikamaru paused ignoring the frantic yowls of the demonic feline caught in his shadow. The sight that had caught his attention was a veritable sea of orange flowing around and up various trees. And either getting blasted off with explosions of chakra or slipping down as if the tree was suddenly made of ice. Got it. Koji declared and Shikamaru released his shadow hold, his attention still on the teeming Naruto's. Walking over, he tapped the closest one on the shoulder. Are you the original, or is he here? No. The clone replied. Boss went off to see Hayashi about something to do with regaining our chakra control. Damn it, one boost and we're back at square one. Shikamaru looked round at the training clones. I did some research into how Kage Bunshin work. He commented. Since Naruto uses so many of you clones in our exercises, I decided that I needed to learn their strengths and weaknesses. While reading the scroll under my father's gaze, I came across an interesting note about how the memory return phenomenon works and I came up with a possible way of magnifying its effects. Naruto knelt in the Hyuga main branch dojo as Hayashi stood in front of him. Beside him, Hinata sat calmly, her presence reassuring even though she was remaining silent. So. Hayashi stated. As Hinata has explained, you have recently undergone a change in your chakra, thus requiring you to relearn your chakra control. Correct. Hayashi Dano. Naruto confirmed. And my daughter suggested that learning some of the Hyuga clan's secret techniques. Hinata Hime said that should you allow me to learn the chakra control exercises that the Hyuga clan uses, my chakra control will return to its previous level a great deal sooner than I would be able to achieve otherwise. Naruto confirmed. However, any such decision must be taken by you. Should you choose to allow me to learn, I will willingly take an oath to never teach another the secret techniques in question. Hayashi nodded slowly. 
Actually, as soon as Hinata explained the problem to me, I decided that I would aid you myself in the times when I am not pursuing my other project. Naruto stared at Hayashi in shock while Hinata twitched slightly. Hayashi's lips twitched slightly in amusement, then he turned and walked to the front of the dojo. Picking up what looked like a bundle of metal sticks, tubes and plates, he returned to the middle of the dojo and began setting it up, aided by Hinata. Soon, a spindly looking table was standing in the middle of the dojo. What, is it? Naruto asked, joining Hinata and looking at the device in confusion. As you know, the Jiyukin, our fighting style, relies on highly focused chakra strikes. In order to achieve this, our clan had to learn how to expel chakra and focus it as precisely as possible. To that end, we developed a series of, tools, to aid us. This is the first, designed to aid in teaching how to expel precise amounts of chakra. Daughter. Hinata placed her hands on two marked points and activated her Byakugan, then the innermost rod rose from the tube that was holding it, halting halfway up. A few seconds later, the six rods surrounding it rose to half of the height of the first rod, then the outermost ring rose to half the height of the previous ring, then all of the rods sank back down. Your chakra capacity has indeed increased, daughter. Hayashi noted approvingly as Hinata stepped back, then he placed his hands on the marked points. Naruto watched as the center rod rose almost to its full height with the surrounding rods rising and falling in a near hypnotic fashion before they retracted once more. Power raises the rods, control over the amount of power lets you move them. As you saw, with enough practice and discipline, the rods can be controlled individually. Have a try. Just channel a small amount of chakra to start with. Naruto stepped up and slowly placed his hands on the indentations. Taking a calming breath, he reached inside for the smallest amount of chakra he could and pushed it into the device, only for the flow of chakra to suddenly spike. Fwoosh. Toy oi 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 Ah, oops. Hinata and Hayashi both stared at the ceiling, where the central rod had embedded itself for half of its length in the central beam. Ah ha 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 hey, sorry. You really do have a problem with your chakra control, don't you? Hayashi finally managed. Perhaps we should try this in the old gazebo. Hinata suggested. Perhaps we should. Hayashi agreed. Perhaps we should. Well, that was, interesting. Hinata giggled as she and Naruto walked down the narrow path. At least your father was understanding. Naruto sighed. Although if I keep it up, it's going to cost me a great deal to keep repairing the gazebos, still cheaper than paying to rebuild the dojo, though. Hinata's giggles turned into musical laughter and Naruto smiled at her while he wrapped an arm around her shoulders in order to prevent her stumbling. Once I get my control back enough to do the hyration again, I'll bring Tajuna over and pay him to build a new gazebo for your clan. Naruto said as Hinata managed to bring herself under control again. I'm sure you'll do better tomorrow. Hinata smiled. I hope so. Naruto sighed. What the? Hayashi stopped as he heard the cut-off exclamation, then turned round and hurried to where the speaker was stood, staring upwards in shock. Tosan. Hayashi. The elder replied almost absently. What, happened? I do not recall those holes being there before. Hayashi looked up at the multiple holes that marked the support beams or actually penetrated through the wooden roofing. The result of a chakra control exercise. He said in explanation. However, there are fewer holes than I expected. His control must have improved significantly. What? What sort of exercise causes, this? Hayashi motioned to the rod and tube device stood in the corner of the gazebo and the elder stared at it disbelievingly. Who? Impressive. Hayashi allowed as he watched the rods slowly rise and fall. Less than a week to attain this level of control. Using dozens of clones to water and tree walk every moment of the day helped. Naruto admitted. Shikamaru's concept of staggered dispelling made all the difference. Hayashi raised a quizzical eyebrow and Hinata quickly explained. If a clone is dispelled, Naruto gets its memories, but if a clone dispels itself, its memories are received by all of the other clones as well. Shikamaru worked it out a while back during one of Naruto's missions to help train Team 10 and when he found out that Naruto was having trouble with his chakra control, he exchanged his knowledge for a couple of favors to be held until he claims them. 
I had my clones practicing the Rasengan again. Naruto added. At first, they kept destabilizing, but I can do it again now. As soon as I manage a couple of test hiration jumps, I'll be ready to do that as well. Your chakra has smoothed out. Hinata noted, deactivating her Byakugan. There aren't any red blobs in it anymore. True, although the actual shade of color has changed slightly. Hayashi agreed, deactivating his own Byakugan as he spoke. Maybe we can start using clones again. Hinata suggested hopefully. By training with them, I was finally getting better in Jiyukan. That reminds me. Hayashi said. I took the liberty of speaking to Might Guy after Neji mentioned that Guy had corrected one of his stances recently. He has seen you practice and he says that the standard Jiyukan is not optimal for you, given how you move. I have tasked one of my aides with searching the archive for the variant that your mother used. The version known as... Juho. Hayashi stopped speaking as Hinata threw herself at him, hugging him tightly before suddenly releasing him and stepping back, blushing furiously. My apologies, Hayashi-sama. Naruto said quickly, earning a confused stare from the Hyuga clan head. The clone practice technique has, amongst its other effects, a tendency to cause Hinata and myself to occasionally respond as the other would. That was my standard happy hug. It's a side effect that we hadn't really considered a problem, until now. It was, unexpected. Hayashi agreed. But I feel no need to take issue with it. Hinata sagged in relief. Nice. Jiraiya said as he examined the swirling sphere of chakra in Naruto's hand. I'd say you'd managed to get your chakra control back to where it should be. I've got my hiration working again. Naruto agreed. Just in time, too. I've got a load of messenger missions waiting for me. Happens when you're faster than even the best messenger birds. Jiraiya chuckled. Fortunately, the three who taught you have been picking up some of the slack. You know, Naruto mused, if I give Hinata a couple of clones to work with, she could help out as well. And what happens if one of the clones is popped? Jiraiya countered. Until she has enough chakra to create two clones on her own and be able to make a jump, she'd be technically at risk every time she did one of the relay missions. I guess you're right. Naruto sighed. It's just... I know, kid. Jiraiya agreed softly. You want everyone else to know just how awesome she really is and how lucky you are that she wants you. Naruto gave the older man a questioning look and the Toad Sage gave a lopsided smile in return. You're not the first person to fall hopelessly in love, you know. Let me tell you of my old teammate Tsunade. I had a crush on her for years, but when she became engaged, I swore that I wouldn't do a thing that could stop her being happy. Chapter 38, Research of a Genin Hey, sis. Wake up. Hinata was jolted out of her pleasant dreams in which she was snuggled up to Naruto in the middle of a field of flowers, awakened by the impact of her sister landing on her bed. Hinabi? What are you? Hinata, you may wish to get up. Hayashi said from the doorway. Naruto has inquired as to whether you will be able to aid him in a mission today. I think so. Hinata yawned, fighting to shake off the last vestiges of sleep. When does Naruto-kun want me? All the time. Hanabi sighed. What? Have you watched him whenever he has to say goodbye? It's like watching a kicked puppy. Both Hayashi and Hinata stared at Hanabi, who blushed slightly under their combined attention. I was talking to Kiba. She muttered. His dog's really cute, he loves to have his belly rubbed and it's really soft. I mean Akamaru, not Kiba. Akamaru loves to have his belly rubbed. Hinata started giggling as her sister tried to justify herself and Hanabi stopped talking, choosing instead to stamp her foot and glare at her older sibling. Stop laughing at me. Naruto. Hinata. Naruto grinned back. Glad you could make it. I have a mission to wave today and I wondered if you'd like to join in. You know, get another C rank on your record. Hinata smiled. That would be nice. I'm not studying under Ebisu sensei today and my training with my normal team isn't until tomorrow, then I'm cheering for Kiba and Shino on the day after. What's the mission? Bringing Tajuna's family over. Naruto replied. By the way, how's everyone enjoying the new gazebo? 
It's become the place to find the elders. Hinata. Giggled. Tajunasan and his men did a very good job with it. We did a super job. Tajuna's voice interjected and Hinata turned to face the new arrival. You did indeed, Tajunasama. She said with a bow and the old man laughed. Hinata-san. Naruto. Enruto nodded back at the builder, then summoned a clone. All right. Hinata, Tsunami, and Inari should be packed by now, so we simply jump over there, then we bring them back. I'm ready. Hinata stated as she reached out to take the hands of Naruto and his clone. Tajuna watched them vanish, then leaned back against the tree to wait. How long will they be? Ayayayi. Tajuna yelped, clutching at his chest. Damn it. I'm an old man. You trying to give me a heart attack? My apologies. Inoichi replied contritely as he stepped out from behind the tree. My wife sent me to make sure that your daughter and grandson didn't get lost. Tajuna nodded, still breathing deeply as he recovered from the shock. Right, okay. Just, please don't do that again. I'm a shinobi. Inoichi chuckled. I can't help it. Ruddy shinobi. Tajuna grumbled and Inoichi's chuckles intensified, earning an irritated glare. Yeah, yeah. Laugh it up, you're not the one on the verge of heart failure. Inoichi opened his mouth to answer when a double flash of light marked Naruto and Hinata's return, along with four clones and two very familiar people. Hey, Gramps. Inari shouted, ducking under Naruto's arm as he dashed across. Hey, Uncle Inoichi. I managed to do the leaf exercise for five minutes. Well done. Inoichi said with a smile. You are making very good progress. Inari grinned even as his mother joined him. Hello, Inoichi-san. She smiled. Thank you for offering to house us for the finals. Ayaka would have it no other way. Inoichi shrugged, his eyes crinkled in amusement. Where's Inoni-san? Inari asked curiously. I though she'd be here to say hello. Training with her team. Inoichi replied. But she should be finished before tea, so you can surprise her then. Cool. Inari laughed. Tajuna, Inoichi, if you will sign. Naruto interjected as he extended a clipboard and Inoichi nodded. Of course. Pay attention, Inari, this is one of the differences between an elite genin like Hinata or Ino and an independent genin like Naruto. Naruto needs to get his customers to sign directly so that he can get paid whereas those on a team can leave it to their jonin sensei while learning other stuff. In other words, in order to learn enough to get promoted fast and high, being on a team really helps. Naruto supplied. I lucked out by finding people willing to teach me for very little money, or even free, but that rarely happens for independent genin, we generally have to rely on scroll learning or trying to teach ourselves since hiring chunin or jonin to teach us can be very expensive. That's why so few of us ever get good enough to be promoted. Inari frowned as he considered what Naruto had said. That doesn't seem fair. But any chunin or jonin who started as an independent genin is generally considered to be better, since they didn't get the shortcuts that being on a team provides. Inoichi said as he handed the clipboard to Tajuna for him to sign. In addition, should a team lose a member, the replacement is usually drawn from the ranks of the independent genin in order to ensure that the newcomer is at least trained in the basics rather than being simply fresh from the academy kunai fodder. Heh, quite often. The newcomer is actually better trained in the basics than the team simply because they have so much more practice using them in actual missions. Cool. Inari breathed. Hey, where'd they go? Ninja. Tajuna sighed, glancing at his now empty hand. They can't help it. Ruddy ninja. Inoichi agreed, earning a look from Tajuna. That was fun. Hinata smiled as she followed Naruto in sneaking away. Just got to cash this in, then is there anything that you want to do with me? Naruto asked even as he sealed the clipboard into a storage seal on his belt. Fortunately for Hinata, Naruto was concentrating on getting the clipboard into the correct seal, so he missed Hinata's brief, albeit rather intense blush. Hinata managed to refocus as Naruto finished his task. Well, perhaps we could try to go through your father's scroll again, she suggested. 
Maybe we can work out exactly what we're missing when it comes to trying to make your father's technique work properly. Good idea. Naruto agreed as he summoned a clone which saluted and dispelled. Okay, my clones will have things prepared for us by the time we get there. Sounds good to me. Hinata agreed, using Naruto's distraction to wrap his arm around her and lean her head on his shoulder. Naruto blinked for a moment, then tilted his head slightly so that his cheek was pressed against the crown of her head. Hey, lovebirds. A voice called and both Genin looked round to see Team 7's Genin smirking at them while from behind the trio Kakashi gave them a nice smile. Hi. Naruto managed. Air, correct me if I'm wrong, but, shouldn't two of you be, well, training? The final takes place the day after tomorrow. Well, we make sure to have at least one team training session a week. Kakashi shrugged. I like to keep track of how my cute little genin are doing. Naruto managed not to smile at Kakashi's description, although the look of annoyance on Sasuke's face and the way Sakura rolled her eyes made it harder. Are you getting a mission? Sakura asked and Hinata shook her head. Naruto-kun and I have just done one. Deeranks. Tobio grumped, rolling his eyes. Oi. Well, if we don't see you before the finals, good luck. Naruto said as a clone formed behind him. Hinata. Good luck. Hinata called as she took Naruto's hand as well as the hand offered to her by Naruto's clone, then they moved, the world blinking round them and reforming into Naruto's living area. Lunch is almost ready. Called the clone in behind the kitchen counter. You lay the table and I'll get the scroll for after. Naruto suggested and Hinata nodded as she walked round the end of the counter to open the cutlery drawer. What does this part mean? Hinata asked as she pointed at the scroll spread on the dining table. Hmm? Oh, that's one of the chakra pulse dissipators for the location tags. Naruto said. The others are here, 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 and here. They all look different. Hinata noted and Naruto nodded. As you can see, this one's, Raiden, judging by symbol in the middle, the one you pointed to is Sutton, this one's, Yin. Huh. Didn't realize Yin was an element. I wonder what elements your father used. Hinata asked. He started as a wind type but branched out into using fire and lightning by the time he made Chunin. Jiraiya replied from where he was lounging on the couch, causing both Jenin to jolt in shock. Damn it, pervy sage. Naruto half shouted. Don't do that to us. Jiraiya chuckled as he rose from the sofa and strolled over to them. Sorry, but you needed to learn never to get so absorbed in your work that you forget to keep a lookout. If it helps, I was only there for a few seconds before I replied to your query. Besides, your dad gave me permission to pop in whenever I wanted. From now on, please knock. Hinata requested and Jiraiya nodded. Okay. Anything to avoid having that kawaii no jutsu directed at me again. He agreed and Hinata blushed slightly. So, let me have a look to refresh my memory. The genin moved to let Jiraiya examine the scroll, then he nodded. Yep. I thought so. Thought what? Naruto asked curiously. Well, you know I'm a seal master, right? Jiraiya asked and both Genin nodded. All I really did was start Minato off, then he blazed his own trail, although Kushina helped him with some of it. He managed to fuse the Uzumaki and the Kanaha sealing styles together, creating something that even I had difficulty with. This? This was his master work. I only understand some of it, things like this bit still flummox me. That's a modified summoning seal with the dimensional axis replaced with a variable vector linear translocation. Naruto said, then he looked up to meet Jiraiya's shocked gaze. What? I've studied really hard to stop sounding like the idiot I was before Hinata started teaching M, M M M M M P H. Jiraiya barely managed not to snigger as Hinata grabbed Naruto and gave him a long kiss. I, wow. Air, what was? I warned you about calling yourself an idiot. Hinata smiled. Wow, Naruto. Breathed. I have to thank Kiba. What? Jiraiya asked in confusion. Kiba looked around curiously. What is it? Tsume asked and Kiba shrugged. Not sure. I just felt, amused satisfaction. Tsume looked at her son, then shrugged. 
They're your emotions, not mine. Now, show me the Gachuga again, you need to get the revolutions higher. Wow. Naruto said again. That was. I felt like I was just floating, like light, hey. That's it. Thanks, Hinata, I get it now. And for those of us who weren't on the receiving end of a kiss by the Hyuga princess. Jiraiya prompted, only for Naruto to ignore him as he grabbed a pen and started scribbling notes. Is it this annoying when I do that? Jiraiya asked Hinata, motioning to where Naruto had flipped over one page and was writing even more notes. Yep. Hinata chirped as she moved closer to her fiancé. What caused this? Hiruzen asked, looking at the corpse of one of Kanaha's greatest kanjutsu specialists. From the sharpness of the cut, we believe it to have been a wind blade. The medical technician reported. From the marks on his sword, he tried to fight, but his blade got caught in some sort of armor. Hiruzen inspected the proffered blade, noting the location of the scuffing. He was using the dance of the crescent moon. He finally deduced. That's the only attack that would leave marks at that particular point of the blade and at that angle. He was trying for a decapitation strike, and it was blocked. For him to have been struck down in turn, probably Orochimaru. But who was he disguised as this time? I want Umbu to interview all the Jonin in hurry. The Kaze Kage is arriving tomorrow and if we can find Orochimaru before then. Several blurs marked the departure of Umbu operatives, heading to where the non-Kanaha Jonin were staying while other shinobi raced to the private homes of Kanaha's team leaders and specialists. Baki slumped in relief after the Umbu vanished out of the window. Kanaha thought that the swordsman had been killed by the snake Sunin. Although considering that Suna had allied itself with him for the upcoming invasion, the conclusion actually wasn't all that far from the truth. Chapter 39, A Genin Guard Lord Hokage Naruto said, standing at attention. You are asking a genin to be your guard for today. The veiled man asked curiously and Hiruzen smirked. I am. Naruto is one of the most skilled genin of his generation, having him as one of my guards will help to overcome any setbacks caused by him not being on a team. Why isn't he on a team? The guest asked. My apologies, it probably is none of my business, but I admit to curiosity. Naruto chose a different path. Hiruzen smiled. One that uniquely suited his talents. And he will use one of those to help us make an entrance. Naruto, there's a tag in the Hokage box of the stadium. Naruto closed his eyes and let his senses spread out, using his experience to locate all of the tags relative to himself. One of them was in a different place to where it had been and he nodded as he fixed its location in his mind. Got it. Then leave enough clones to transport the Kaze Kage, his two guards, myself and one guard outside the office and rejoin us to jump us to the box when I give the signal. Naruto bowed and backed out of the office as the Kaze Kage turned to look at Hiruzen. So, what path did? The question was cut off by the closing door and Naruto breathed a sigh of relief before creating a score of clones. You know what to do. He said, then he pointed at one of them. You're on messenger duty. Dispel once you get the orders. You got it, boss. The clone said, then he smiled. Going to see Hinata Hime. Not today. Naruto sighed. She's going with her family and, why am I telling you this? You should know it too. The clone smirked and Naruto shook his head. I need some ramen. I wonder who the other guard is going to be. Father. Asuma bowed and the Kaze Kage glanced at Hiruzen. My intelligence may be wrong, but does your son not have his own team to lead? Hiruzen nodded for Asuma to respond. My students will be watching the matches with their clans and, in the Yamanaka clan's case at least, their guests. As a former member of the Twelve Guardian Ninja, I have experience in the role my father has asked me to assume for the finals. May I ask who the other guard will be? Naruto. Hiruzen smirked and Asuma blinked in thought before smiling. Very clever, father, and it certainly explains the blonde mob in the outer office. I thought so. Hiruzen smirked. And yes, it certainly does. Naruto paused in the middle of eating a bowl of ramen and looked round suspiciously. Something wrong with the ramen. 
Teiyuchi asked from behind the counter and Naruto turned his attention back to the steaming bowl of noodly goodness on the counter in front of him. The ramen's great, Teiyuchi Jiji. Naruto. Grinned, then he looked round again. It just felt like someone was talking about me. You're famous now. Teiyuchi grinned. Of course they'd talk about you. And I think it's time. Hiruzen commented. Asuma, if you'll pass the word. Asuma nodded and stepped to the office door. Opening it, he leaned through for a moment, then stepped back with a slight smile as a flash of light leaked through. A veritable horde of Naruto's clones followed him in his heroes and moved to the middle of the office, the Kaze Kage and his guards following his example. We're ready, sir. Naruto said from his position behind and to the right of heroes and even as the clones finished taking up their positions. Then, do it. Hiruzen commanded and the office was briefly illuminated by a golden flash. Wow. Inari whispered as he looked around the large stadium. This place is, huge. Yep. Ino sighed, looking at the large arena floor. Hey, you'll get to fight there next time. Inari said reassuringly, earning a smile from Ino. This could be troublesome. Shikamaru sighed as he settled down in front of them and accepted a bag of crisps from Koji. Nine matches to watch in the fifth. I heard about what Gara did, going up against a Jinchuriki, even after all the research I've done, the only way I'd be willing to go up against a Jinchuriki is if I've learned Fuinjutsu to the level of Jiraiya or the Yondaime. You're getting very good with the ceiling scrolls and your shadow explosion is pretty cool, when you can get it to work, that is. Koji commented before taking another bite out of his crisp and Ino frowned. Shika. My son is learning to combine Fuinjutsu with our shadow manipulation. Shikaku said from nearby. Although he has only been studying since the second stage, he has made quite a bit of progress. At long last, we have enough ceiling scrolls to meet our needs without having to purchase them. It currently takes about an hour to do a scroll. Shikamaru shrugged. But in exchange, my clan's arranged Fuinjutsu lessons to help me get better. Koji gave his friend a long look, then he sighed. Looks like I need to learn something new if I'm to keep up with you. Just my clan techniques won't really cut it, will they? They worked for me. Chauza shrugged, then he glanced at his son. But as the new generation Inoshikacho, you do need something to help you differentiate yourself from, what was that? A golden flash of light from the Kage box caused everyone to look at where the Hokage and the Kaze Kage had appeared. I am just so pumped. Kiba exulted as he stood at the edge of the contestant's platform, one hand gripping the railing as he looked at the crowd. Yeah. All these people here to see us prove we're worthy of being Chunin. Calm down. Sasuke commanded as he stepped up and glanced around. You're not the only one here to prove themselves. From the corner of the box, Chu Chi Kin briefly sneered at them, then looked at the audience, a slight frown on her face. Where are they? She whispered and Tamari glanced over. Who? My team. Kin snapped. My idiot teammates aren't here. They should be over there, but there's no sign of them. Probably jealous. Tamari shrugged as she returned to polishing her fan. Kankuro's been grousing over having to forfeit rather than go up against an Aburame for the last month. He even considered sitting it in a sulk out but Baki sensei dragged him along. Must be nice to have teammates you can trust. Kin sighed, earning an odd look from Tamari. He's my brother. As is Gara, unfortunately. Kin glanced across at the red-haired boy in the opposite corner and shuddered. I saw what he did in the preliminaries. She half whispered. Is he normally like that? Unfortunate, what the? Tamari's reply was cut short by a flash of light in the Kage booth, a flash that announced the arrival of the two cages and their guards. Neji's going to win. Hanabi declared as she accepted a drink from her older sister. I don't know. Hinata mused, earning a curious look from both her father and sister. His first match is against a nice user and our style relies on having a solid footing. A valid point. Hayashi agreed, causing his youngest daughter to stare at him disbelievingly. While the Jiyukin is indeed virtually unbeatable in normal circumstances, those who choose to use different techniques that do not allow us to engage in taijutsu may claim victory. As Hanabi frowned, 
Hinata fought down the urge to snicker. You tried out one of Naruto-kun's trap courses, didn't you? I was curious as to why Neji was grumbling and reading that book by Uchiha Madara. Hayashi admitted with a slight wince as he remembered the events in question. Fortunately, he went easy on me. So that's why you started insisting on everyone learning at least the basics of traps. Hinata exclaimed in realization, then she smiled. You know, if Naruto's not around, Ino's turning into quite a trap mistress. Hayashi glanced at the section reserved for the Nara, Akamike, and Yamanaka clans, plus their guests, then his attention was caught by the flash of light from the previously empty Kage box. Still can't believe that I was meant to go up against an Aburame. Kankuro groused, then he flinched as Baka slapped the package on his back. You've had a month to get over it. Baka snapped. Now, stop whinging and remember why we're here. Yeah, yeah. Kankuro grumbled. I'm ready. Good. Baka growled, then he turned his attention to the distant platform where the Genin competitors were standing. The hell. Kankuro gasped and Baka followed his gaze to the cage's box. Where did they come from? I thought that you would show up late, my eternal rival. Guy noted as Kakashi sat down near him. Meh, maybe in another life where I wasn't forced to confront what I had become. Kakashi admitted. As much as I hate to admit it, having Naruto walk from my test was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. You have regained quite a bit of your youthfulness. Guy admitted. And I see that you have taken a page from my training techniques. What do you mean, Guy-sensei? Rock Lee asked curiously, leaning forwards to look around at the white-haired jonin. I mean that Sasuke is wearing weights to increase his speed. Guy explained. I do not believe that they are anywhere near your youthful aids, but he is wearing them on his wrists and ankles. Looks like the Hokage has arrived. Kakashi interjected. Go, Gramps. Kano Amaru shouted from where he was sat beside Lee and Kakashi stared in horror at the sight of the Hokage's grandson and his two friends clad in green unit arts with orange leg warmers. That was certainly, unusual. And what happened to all the clones? The Kaze Kage commented as he made his way to the padded seat set up for him. You get used to it. Hiruzen replied as he lowered himself into his own chair. As for the clones, the way the hyration works means that they dispel as the jump is completed. Using clones to move someone via hyration imposes a chakra cost of three Kage Bunshin for each person moved. Ah, so not something that can be used to transport any significant numbers into battle. A single shinobi can be significant in the right circumstances. Here is encountered. And two of them, if unexpected, can easily turn the tide of a confrontation. I had heard that you and another had driven off the Nukan and Orochimaru. The Kaze Kage acknowledged and behind them, Naruto briefly smirked before a glance from Asuma quelled him. Isn't that your sensei in the Kage box? Ineri asked curiously and Ino nodded. Yep. You remember that I told you he's the Hokage's son. At Ineri's nod, Ino continued her explanation. Asuma-sensei explained that since we were going to sit with our clans for this, he was doing something similar, going with his father. His nephew, Kano Amaru, wanted to go with his role model, Rock Lee. That's them over there, Lee, his sensei guy, Kano Amaru, and his two friends. The line of, unfashionable green. Ineri fought down an incredulous laugh as he spotted the five green spandex-clad people. Then it is time to begin. Hiruzen said as he rose from his seat. The crowd went almost silent as he stepped forwards to the edge of the box, where the inlaid seals would pick up and amplify his voice. A glance across the arena showed that the contestants had left the platform and were filing out into the middle of the arena, under the instruction of Shiranui Genma, the proctor for the fights who had been appointed after Hayate's death. Once the genin were in a line, Hiruzen began speaking. Honored guests, fellow shinobi, ladies, gentlemen, did I miss anyone out? A susurration of chuckles sounded and Hiruzen waited for silence to fall once more before continuing. You see before you ten genin who have made their way through tests, competitions, and obstacles that have stopped almost 200 others in their tracks. These ten are the ones who made it to this stage, who proved their right to try for promotion. Here today, before us all, they will show us why they should be promoted. 
They will demonstrate their skills and abilities. They will each represent their village as well as they can, but the fact that they are here now is already proof that they are the best. A roar of cheering erupted from the stands as several of the genin in the arena waved at the crowds and Hiruzen stood back, nodding to his son to take over. Asuma stepped forwards, glancing at the line, then he spoke. From left to right we have Gara of the Desert. Tamari of Suna. Chuchi Kinavoto. Harano Sakura of Kanaha. Uchiha Sasuke of Kanaha. Yuki Haku of Mizu. Higurashi Tenten of Kanaha. Inyazuka Kiba of Kanaha. Aburameshino of Kanaha. And Hyuga Neji of Kanaha. The introductions done, Asuma stepped back and Hiruzen stepped forwards once more. Let the finals, begin. Chapter 40, The Finals Commence. Hiruzen stepped forwards to the edge of the box and looked out at the expectant crowd. Let the finals, begin. Dramatic much. Asuma whispered, modulating his voice low enough that only Hiruzen could hear it. Naruto choked down a chuckle and Asuma gave him a curious look. Kiba taught me how to enhance my hearing. Naruto whispered. He traded it for extra meat. Ah. Listen up, my name is Shiranui Genma and I am the proctor for the final stage. The man standing in front of the genin stated. This means that you will obey my orders. If I tell you to fight, you will fight. If I tell you to stop, you will. Should you disobey, I am permitted to use anything up to and including lethal force to stop you. I don't want to do that, because of the paperwork it causes, so don't force me to. His glare traveled along the line of Jenin, then he held up a piece of paper. The first match will be between Higurashi Tenten and Uchiha Sasuke. The rest of you, return to the waiting area. Sakura paused long enough to wish Sasuke good luck, as she followed the others to the staircase leading up to where they would wait for their own matches. Sasuke nodded at her, then turned his attention to Tenten while running through a couple of stretches, using his movements to covertly run through a set of five seals. A slight upwards twitch at the corner of Genma's mouth showed that he had caught the preparation and approved. Take your positions. Sasuke stepped backwards, opening the range and Tenten smirked as her hands suddenly filled with kunai. Genma glanced at the shining blades and sidled backwards. Begin. Tenten's hands blurred and the kunai slammed into Sasuke's thighs and shoulders, throwing him backwards in a spray of blood. The Uchiha hit the ground. And a brief cloud of chakra smoke covered him before dissipating to reveal the kunai jammed into a log. Fast. The Kaze Kage whispered, leaning forwards. No hand seals. He did them during the warm-up. Hiruzen chuckled. It would seem he learned about preparation from that young girl from Oto and what she did in the preliminaries. Tenten spun to face the small copse of trees on one side of the arena and growled. You can't hide forever. A glint was her only warning but it was enough to let her launch a dozen shuriken which collided with the ones arcing towards her, knocking them down so that they clattered harmlessly on the ground. A fireball was next, launched by a figure that appeared briefly on the left of the trees and Tenten simply dashed to her right letting the ball of fire race harmlessly past her even as she fired a salvo of kunai back. Interesting. Guy mused. Although trying to take Tenten on in a Shura Kenjutsu duel is usually a losing proposition, Sasuke is using the trees as a shield, reducing his need to defend himself and thus letting him concentrate on offense. But Tenten-chan retains mobility. Lee added. Truly, this is a fascinating battle. Tenten blinked as a score of kunai suddenly arced up out of the trees and descended towards her, kunai that suddenly multiplied almost a hundredfold, casting a shadow as they descended. Your kunai may block out the sun, she shouted as she unsealed a seven-foot-wide fuma shuriken which she whirled rapidly above her head, but I can still fight in the shade. The falling kunai met the whirling shuriken and were sent flying away from the kunoichi, many of them dispelling as they arced away or hit the ground. Slowing the spin of the shuriken, Tenten paused while holding it to one side, eyes measuring the distance and bearing to the launch point of the kunai barrage, then she spun it with both hands before launching it at the trees. Even as the flying blade howled towards its target, a second wave of kunai was launched, once again multiplying in the air. Shit. Tenten cursed as she sprinted sideways to get out of the area targeted by the kunai. Shit. Sasuke cursed as he hurled himself into a small depression in the ground, 
allowing the giant shuriken to pass harmlessly a mere hand span above him, then he rolled sideways to avoid the toppling tree that threatened to crush him. Leaping to his feet, his eyes widened and he dived behind a fallen tree just in time to avoid the veritable horizontal hail of kunai that Tenten had launched back at him. There you are. Tenten growled as she unsealed another dozen kunai, this time with tags on them. Pausing just long enough to activate the tags, she spun and hurled them into a trajectory that would cause them to hit around the area where she had spotted Sasuke sheltering. Explosive Tags Sasuke yelped, his red eyes letting him see every detail of the smoking papers attached to the kunai. I hope that this works. The wave of explosions sent branches and splinters flying as Tenten prepared a second salvo. As the debris crashed to the ground, Tenten squinted to see through the smoke. A glint caught her eye and she frowned as she realized that she was looking at a log deeply impaled with kunai. Gotcha. Tenten froze as a sharp blade came to rest on her jugular. Fighting the urge to swallow, she opened her hands and let the kunai's drop to the ground to mark her surrender. Winner, Uchiha Sasuke. Genma announced as the audience broke out in cheers and applause. Interesting tactic. The Kaze Kagam used. Using the log that he had switched with at the start to get behind her in order to claim victory. Naruto smirked in recognition of the technique Sasuke had used. Damn it. Tenten sighed as Sasuke removed the kunai from her throat. That was sneaky. And how did you launch all those kunai at me? Sasuke nodded to the fallen trees and the severely damaged kunai launcher poking up from a tangle of branches. I had another three which I unsealed but didn't have a chance to actually set up. I had intended to use them on timers to make you think I was still there while I did the switch and crept up behind you, but that huge blade of yours forced me to change my plan. Tenton nodded, then paused. Weren't you wearing wristbands when we started? My weights are in there somewhere. Sasuke sighed, pointing at the tangle of scorched branches. I may have to hire Naruto and his clones to help me get them back. They have, sentimental value. Tenton looked round at the cheering crowds and sighed. Damn it. I thought I had you, you know. For a moment, I thought you did as well. Sasuke admitted ruefully as he started towards the stairway. Who came up with that technique, anyway? Tenton asked. Naruto. Sasuke shrugged. He pulled it on Shikamaru's team once and Shika's been trying to create a counter ever since. The pair moved aside to let Kiba and Akamaru run past. Then Sasuke reached out to stop Sakura. You can beat him. He said quietly. If you can't trust yourself on that, trust me. Thanks, Sasuke. Sakura smiled as he released her shoulder to allow her to continue towards the arena floor. Sasuke watched her vanish round the corner, then turned back to find Tenten giving him a considering look. What? Buoyed by the words of encouragement from Sasuke, Sakura almost floated across the arena floor coming to a stop in front of the proctor. Inuzuka Kiba, Akamaru, are you ready? Genma asked and both boy and dog nodded eagerly. Harano Sakura, are you ready? Sakura inhaled deeply, then made a show of pulling her combat gloves out of her belt, pulling them on and settling them into position before answering. I'm ready, Proctor-san. She said, carefully channeling chakra into her muscles and bones, a trick she had only realized that she could do during the preliminaries and which she had concentrated on fiercely after Jiraiya explained how Tsunade had attained her super strength. Then, begin. Sakura leapt sideways, hurling a kunai between Kiba and Akamaru in order to try and get them to separate. To her shock, the kunai speared the food pill that Kiba had flung at Akamaru, carrying it over a dozen meters away from the astonished Genin. The hell. Tenton gasped. I thought I was the only one who could make shots like that. Sakura skidded to a stop by the fallen trees and grabbed one, channeling the chakra through herself to give her half a second of enhanced strength as she twisted almost explosively. Okay, that's two people I'm never peeping on. Jiraiya whimpered. Kiba's eyes widened as he dived out of the way of the descending tree trunk, dodging it by mere inches. Rolling to his feet, he let out a high-pitched scream at the sight of three more arcing through the air towards him, then he spun round and sprinted away, leaving small gouges in the ground through the sheer force of his acceleration. A panicked yelping announced that Akamaru had joined him and Kiba fumbled in his pocket for another food pill, 
only to spill them as another shattered tree slammed down just beside him. His panicked fingers managed to find the last pill in the pouch and he tossed it to Akamaru, who snapped it out of the air. Sakura paused and took several deep breaths as she fought to bring her chakra back under control. Although she had been able to deliver a couple of punches or throw a boulder or two without any real problem, keeping up a sustained barrage was on an entirely new level of difficulty. Shikyaku no Jutsu Jujin Bunshin Oh, crap. Sakura muttered as she heard the names of two techniques that she had seen Kiba use during the preliminaries, then from behind one of the trees that she had thrown, two Kibas sprinted out in opposite directions on all fours, arcing round to flank her. Damn it. She growled as she took in their courses. Only one throw before they get in my range. Yeah. Sending a large tree spiraling through the air at the Kiba on the left, Sakura spun round to face the other and punched the ground as hard as she could. The chakra-infused punch shattered the ground, flinging large fragments into the air and knocking her attacker off course so that he sailed past a dozen feet above her head. Yep. Definitely no peeking. Sakura hopped across the shattered area, putting it between herself and her adversaries, then pulled out a soldier pill and snapped it in half. Swallowing half of it to replenish the chakra she had expended on her strength technique, she put the other half back in her medical pouch even as she looked round to try and locate Kiba and Akamaru. That didn't work. Kiba grumbled as he braced himself, then slammed his shoulder against the fallen tree to pop it back into its socket. Grrrrg. Damn, that hurt. Okay, it'll have to hold for now, but we need to end this quick. No choice, to break through her defense, we need to go fang over fang and if that fails, we pull out the big technique. You ready? Sakura raised an eyebrow as both Kibas emerged and sprinted towards her. Idiots. She laughed in relief as she threw another fallen tree at them, only to see something that shattered both the tree and her expectation of victory. Gachuga. Kiba howled as he gathered chakra around himself even as he started spinning, using the chakra and his claws to turn himself into a flying drill while Akamaru did the same. Around them, the world seemed to vanish in a spinning blur that was punctuated by a rain of splinters and Kiba closed his eyes, concentrating on homing in on the shampoo that Sakura used. Shit. Shit shit shit. Sakura screamed as she frantically dodged the first flying drill that had destroyed the throne tree, then she managed to do a backflip that she knew she'd never be able to duplicate again as she avoided the second attack, only to see the first one curving sharply around to try and strike her again. Rather than try to run away, Sakura sprinted towards the incoming drill, diving into a roll at the last instant so that it passed over her, then continuing the roll to get back on her feet and run like hell. Nice one. Inuzuka Hana said approvingly. But how are you homing in on her, little bro? You didn't have Akamaru use dynamic marking. He has her scent, or she has a strong scent already on her. Tsume deduced from beside her. But his rotation is irregular. He's her, left arm, he needs to end this fast or stop and use what I taught him. Sakura skidded to a stop by one of the lighter trees that she had thrown and her eyes widened at the sight of the hollow trunk. For an instant, she considered simply hiding in it, but the memory of the tree exploding as Kiba slashed through it convinced her that it would be futile. However, since they were coming in almost on opposing vectors, Kiba could smell the shampoo getting stronger when suddenly the air around him was replaced by wood, causing him to bark his knuckles and feet, then a massive impact slammed through his technique and he knew no more. Sakura put down the log and peered into it. It had been a technique of desperation, using it to guide Kiba and Akamaru into a head-on collision, but the two still-breathing bodies inside the hollow trunk told her that it had worked. Winner, Harano Sakura. Genma said as he looked into the trunk from the other end and Sakura dropped to her hands and knees, then rolled onto her back as her adrenaline boost gave out. That's it for part 5. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.